Now I've been asked before, what is the best way to know how to price a Webflow project? And that's a fair question because when I was starting out, I was just estimating what people could pay me and what their, essentially what their budget was, right? Like, okay, this is a medium sized company. Maybe they can afford me at 10K, maybe at 5K, maybe at this, maybe at that. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is show you guys a downloadable Notion page that I've created for you guys to help guide you in crafting a better proposal for your clients. Now let's get into it. This is the Notion page when you first download it. And what we have here is two different sections to this page. First, we have a call out here that explains that this is for you to fill out when you're doing your discovery sessions, or your first few calls with your client, you're kind of figuring them out, right? So this is to help guide you in that conversation, right? You want to know a little bit about who the client is, what their main struggles are. And we go past the section, we'll see that there's a different section here that's more of a checkbox, yes or no type of scenario. And then in the end, we've got a proposed budget range that you will deduce from what boxes you checked and which ones you didn't. So let's go ahead and, and see in detail what all these forms are right here. So here we've got the first form here and it says my client is, right? So here you wanna put down everything you know about your client. So their company name, who the people are, what are their values, right? So sometimes you're dealing with a lot of leads, with a lot of sales and you kind of forget who's what and, and why are they calling you? What do they need? What are, like This is a way to kind of amalgamate everything that you know about them, right? So let's go ahead and type a couple names here. So John Doe, he works for Apple and they are trustworthy and great, right? Obviously you wanna fill this out with more detail, but this is the main idea. If you guys wanna use this Notion template right here, then make sure they use the link in the description to download it so you have it for all of your projects. Now let's get back into the video. Then you got the main struggles, right? So what are the main struggles with their website? Are they struggling to convert? Are they struggling to build trust with their with their clients? Are they struggling to be aesthetic, right? To have, to have a, a beautiful site with lots of animations. What are they struggling with on their current site? So let's go ahead and type this out. So maybe maybe not Apple, let's do something like Design Co or something, something generic here. So let's say that these people are struggling with trust. Let's say that they're struggling also with conversions, right? So now you know when you go back to this, what they are and what they're actually struggling with. So next up we've got to solve this, they need. So what does it actually mean? This means what do they actually need from you? Do they need design? Do they need you to build a site in Webflow, in WordPress, in Wix, whatever, whatever you're doing? What do they actually need? Do they need SEO? We'll make sure that they explain as much as possible in as much detail as possible because it's always important to go back to something like this, like a big project file that you and your client have access to. So let's say, so this project needs design, build in Webflow, four to five pages, headers must be videos, whatever it is, right? And then we've got key players to look out for, right? So this can be competitors, this can be some inspiration that they already know, they re that they already have, and also maybe some key players that they don't wanna look like, right? Maybe you're working for a new bank or a new, a new company and they don't wanna look like the old traditional corporate ones, right? So then this is something to look out for, right? So let's say that we don't wanna look like apple.com. Let's say that we don't wanna look like maybe n26.com, right? Something like that. And then competitors can be something like Samsung. It can be something like Adobe, right? Whatever it is. And then inspiration, maybe maybe they find inspiration on a dribble link. Let's go ahead and paste that in. Second to last, do they have a timeline already set? Sometimes clients don't have a timeline that's that's very specific. Sometimes it's just, oh, we, we need it by July. We need it by December, whatever it is. But sometimes it's no. January 13th, this better be on my desk, ready to go, ready to rumble. And I mean, that's that's just based on the client. Right, so let's say these people need it by January 28th, 2022. And lastly, do they have a proposed budget? So let's say, yes, maybe around $15,000. So let's go ahead and fill that out. Okay, so now that, we, now that we've got this section done, we can see all of the main information of this client, right? But now we've got the checklist. So this is the most important part. This is the most critical part that will guide you in your decision on when you're crafting this proposal, when you're crafting this budget, right? So let's go ahead and go through all the checklist points and I'll explain each and every one individually. So is the design complete? All breakpoints. What does this mean? So I've worked with clients in, in the past where they have the design done for desktop, but they don't actually have the designs done for tablet, for mobile, for large breakpoints, whatever it is, they don't have everything done. They don't have everything done to be responsive. And then when it comes down to it, it's your job to build it in mobile and you don't have the design done. So you need to have everything done beforehand. And so let's go ahead and click no here. So we can say didn't have mobile done. Do they have any inspiration, right? Sometimes it'll be your job to go out and find inspiration for this project. Maybe they already have something that they want. Maybe they have dribble shots. Maybe they have Behance posts, whatever it is. Let's go ahead and click yes. We can type in the link here. Do they know how many pages they need? So sometimes clients will know more or less, okay, we need an about page, we need a services and a home page, right? But then they don't know that they need a terms page, they don't know that they need a privacy page, they don't know that they need a e-commerce checkout, a this, a this, a this, a that. So they're not actually fully aware of all the pages that they need and that obviously adds to the cost, right? So we'll go ahead and type in, oh, actually with our example, we put 45 pages, so we'll just say four to five here. 
So do they have their own hosting? Obviously, if you're if you're working with Webflow, then that's it's a different story. But let's just say that they do have their own hosting here. You won't have to go ahead and, and build them accordingly. Do they have their own assets? So are they going? Are you going to need to go out on Unsplash, on stock photos, on whatever, and find the images for them? Or do they already have all the images ready? Right. This is going to add another layer to the cost. So we have to go ahead and make sure that that they know that. Right. So this one's very important. Will they need a lot of animation? Animation takes a lot of time when you're building websites, and sometimes clients aren't aren't aware of that. Right. Because maybe they haven't worked on websites before. But animations take a long, long time, especially if they're very complicated and they're very long-winded, and they take a lot of time. So it's it's best to always keep that into mind. So say that they need a very complicated animation. Will the site have CMS, right? So will they have CMS collections, maybe team members, maybe maybe they have an e-commerce page, something like that, right? I'll get and click no. So will they have an e-commerce also is important because you need to build out the checkout pages, you need to build out all the all the different product pages and it's, it's a different design system. Let's go ahead and click yes. Now the last three are a little bit different, right? The first one is, will the site have a lot of integrations like Zapier, like MemberStack? So if you wanna have a lot of automation on your website, then you might need something like Zapier Zapier, if you want to have members on your actual profile or on your actual SaaS, you might need a membership to something like MemberStack. And that obviously, again, adds to the costs. So let's say, yes, we need Zapier and MemberStack both, and obviously any other integrations that you can think of. And then the last two are, I think maybe one of, one of the most important ones, right? It's, will I enjoy this project? And this project will help me grow in my career. So those two might change up the project range quite a bit, because if you don't enjoy this project and you've got other leads, then it's not really worth your time, right? So maybe you say no, but will this help me grow in my career? So maybe it's it's someone like Samsung or someone like Apple. And if you do a project for them, then you'll grow and you'll, you'll have all this amazing exposure. Okay, well then yes, it will help me grow my career. So what do you do now that you've checked everything here? What do you do with all this information? Well, this isn't necessarily a calculator. It's more of a guide to help you understand everything that there is to know about your client. Do they need CMS? Do they need hosting? Do they have their own assets? Is it a complicated design? And then you start to understand more or less what the range is gonna be, right? If you have a set price that you do per page, then you can go ahead and start programming what that would be, right? Or starting to think about what the actual price would be there. So let's say that, okay, if they have a budget of around $15,000 and it's not a very large project, right? Four to five pages. Okay, well then maybe the range can be from around $9,000 to around 14,500. So now that you've got this sort of range, you, you start to understand what your client actually might pay you. And when you go and present this proposal or this project, they'll be like, okay, actually, maybe we don't really need CMS. We might need this instead and this instead. So then you start again, crafting the idea of how much it's gonna cost and you start to getting a better understanding of what the project might be. If you guys wanna go ahead and download this guide, then use the link in the description. It's my very first online digital product thing. So I hope that you guys actually enjoy it. If you guys have any questions, then leave them down below. But I think this is a pretty good guide for getting started in pricing and understanding a little bit about what your client wants and who they are and how much it's going to cost you and how much it's going to cost them. If you guys like this video, then make sure that you like it and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.